Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed lunch. So next in line, we have Bharat Rao. Bharat is the founder and CEO of Leverage Exchange and also the creator of Gluon Plasma, the non-custodial high-speed exchange protocol. After a long stint on, the, on Wall Street, he realized that the problem of financial systems are due to custody problems, and blockchain and crypto are the natural solution. Bharat, please. Hello. Uh, so by a quick show of hands, how many of you are traders here? Almost everybody, great. Uh, and how many of you have your own exchanges? Adam? <laughs> um, so I was, uh, you know, my start was on Wall Street and I went through the 2000, 2008 crisis and we uh, tried to model why crises occur and why all the panics occurred in, you know, before the, the financial system was regulated. And we discovered that pretty much everything can be modeled as a custody problem, right? So custody, when a small group of people has custody of the assets of everyone else, it leads to uh, a moral hazard. You know, you get the benefits if something goes well, the losses are uh, someone else's if something goes wrong. And eventually it leads to corruption. Uh, the custody of actual currencies, as you can see, is always inflation. Uh, the, the destination of that is always inflation. Some countries inflate fast, some inflate slow. Uh, Venezuela and you know, Zimbabwe, all of these are examples of uh, uh, you know, custody of currency itself. This is something that's been solved by Cryptocurrency, uh, you cannot really inflate Bitcoin beyond its um, program rate. Uh, and uh, we know that anything that is controlled by a small group of people can be used for, um, you know, political purposes as well. So in some places, the government can simply keep raising interest rates till there is a recession if they don't like the administration or they can cut um, uh, you know, interest rates till the, you know, the supply of uh, credit uh, creates a boom. So the centrality of control of everyone's assets is essentially the cause of every single crisis that's been documented in history. Um, so we, you know, we do have uh, cryptocurrency. The, at the currency level, we solve this problem. But anything above it, anything we have built above it, Cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, you know, m many of the projects have the same issues. They, they do, sub, you know, uh, in my domain of exchanges, we see a lot of exit scams, we see security breaches really uh, one or two every month. Uh, user information is stolen or sold or, um, you know, worse. Um, so the custody of both users' funds and the user information is uh, a problem and all of these are issues are artifacts of custody. So we do have DEXs now, and uh, DEXs sort of attempt to bring the values of cryptocurrency to, to the application layer. And if this works, this would be great. This would uh, solve or make financial crisis a thing of the past. The problem is there's very high latency and there's a high cost. The the cost is not just the gas cost, it's also the spreads have to be wider, it's just everything, um, everything is worse when trading on the DEX. The latency is, uh, is a real problem because high latency makes it impossible to uh, make a market on, on an exchange. So uh, there is an actual physical limit that you need to exceed. And that happens to be around 110 milliseconds, 110 to 130 milliseconds. 
uh, if you cannot move your orders faster than that, the market maker will lose uh, not, not just some money, he will lose everything uh, you know, they put into the market. So you do not have liquidity on DEXs for this reason. DEXs have, uh, you know, they're famous for um, just atrocious U UX. It's just, uh, um, you, you cannot really trade with any sort of confidence or uh, comfort. Um, they're subject to price manipulation. So for example, on, on something that's like 0x, where it's just a bulletin board of orders, uh, something is trading, uh, something is quoting from $1 to $10,000, Someone could skip everything from one to 9,999, take a small fraction of a $10,000 quote, and print a huge price. He would just manipulate the candle. Uh, since you don't have to eat through all the prices, this means there's no price discovery, which means you cannot uh, have stop orders or OCO orders or any, anything advanced. Uh, so it's just professional traders will never trade on DEXs for this reason. So we do now have uh, layer two DEXs. People are trying to incorporate the best of both. Uh, one is, um, you know, the low cost of centralized exchanges. Centralized exchanges really per trade, there's no real cost, uh, except the fees. There's no cost in terms of the blockchain and the gas and all of that. Uh, they have a low latency. You can click uh, and it just fills, you know, uh, it's, it's just a technical uh, limitation. There is no blockchain or consensus limitation. And because of this, you can have a high liquidity. Uh, market makers can move 20 to 100 orders in a few milliseconds uh, when the external market changes. So they are very happy to provide liquidity. They can eat the spread. Your blockchain uh, characteristics do not eat into their profit. So they are very happy. And layer two DEXs are trying to uh, do that. So for all practical purposes, from a trader's perspective, this feels like a centralized exchange. Some of the examples are, uh, you know, the plasma on Ethereum. Uh, you know, we call it a sidechain. It's not a technically a sidechain, but it works effectively like that. So if you look at an exchange as a sidechain, when you deposit, you are moving funds to the exchange chain, do some trading, and you uh, bring your funds back. It's a trusted sidechain, but it's, you know, we, layer two tries to use that concept and come up with the trusted sidechain. We also have Lightning Network and State Channels. There's some work on there. There's, there's no real uh, traction as of yet, but it's uh, possible promising technologies. So um, we created something called Glow on Plasma. This is designed especially for exchanges. And this is uh, completely trustless. Um, the experience is very centralized. From a user's perspective, they deposit into the Plasma contract, just like depositing into an exchange address. They trade and they withdraw. No real difference in terms of UX. The way it works is if you guys are familiar with Plasma or Glowon Plasma, I, uh, you know, I suggest you read, up, read on it if you're interested. Uh, what happens is the Glowon Plasma has a separate chain and it commits the balances as a Merkle root once every 10 minutes into a, into a root chain. Right now it's Ethereum, it could be really anything. If tomorrow we get robust uh, side chains on Bitcoin, we could move that as well. And uh, you withdraw by providing proof of your balance. And that's basically it. The low latency enables very high liquidity. Uh, and we like to say solid liquid plasma. This is essentially the experience we want our users to have. Uh, Leverage is the only plasma DEX that's live today uh, that has any, any amount of uh, usage and uh, traffic. Uh, currently, we, it's, it's Ethereum based, so we only have ERC20 tokens and ETH DAI. Uh, we uh, are working on adding futures and derivatives. Uh, this is also an exchange platform in the sense other exchanges can uh, use the same chain and share liquidity and uh, orders and all of that. It's uh, designed with that in mind. So, you know, if any of you are planning to start your own futures exchange, th th this is a good option. Uh, so this is, I'll just quickly run through um, what it's like to uh, use the exchange today. Um, Currently, we support MetaMask, so you would go to the, you'd go to live.leverage.io, you would see MetaMask saying, hey, I want to connect. You click on the connect button, you see the exchange, and then, uh, you know, you, you would say sign up, uh, you would select uh, the country of your, um, you know, your residence, and uh, you, you can download a trading pass if you want. Uh, the trading pass is essentially an API key that you can use to, uh, 
uh, trade on a bot and so on. It cannot really withdraw funds. It can only trade on your behalf. If you lose it, no big deal. You can create another one. Uh, you can invalidate the old one. Um, so uh, the, m the funds can only be withdrawn by your actual wallet. Uh, and once it is, so this, is, this will be an on-chain thing to register it, on-chain transaction. And once it's done, um, you know, you can go to your funds. Uh, my, you can click on My Assets, you'll see your uh, funds. And uh, when you say on my wallet, you see uh, the 2.999, this, this actually is in your wallet. This is uh, your, uh, you know, Ethereum private key. It's nothing to do with the Plasma chain. Uh, you can choose to deposit, and you can, you know, so here I'm depositing one ETH. Uh, you submit it, and uh, now you have to wait for a glow -on, uh, two gluon blocks. Uh, this is to ensure that there's sufficient um, work on the root chain to make it safe. And once it's done, uh, you can see your funds in the available, uh, and uh, we should be ready to trade. And trading is, uh, uh, you know, so the, the, the UI is, is a work in progress. Um, uh, right now, you can press Control or Alt and just click on anywhere in the chart. You can place an order that way. Uh, you can also click anywhere on the order book. Uh, so this is a sort of standardized interfaces, and I, I don't uh, really want to spend a lot of time explaining it. Uh, and you know, once once it's filled, uh, it fills pretty much instantly, just like a centralized exchange, because it's there's no blockchain involved in placing orders, canceling orders, or filling orders. There's only blockchain involved in uh, uh, withdrawing the funds. So this is essentially um, in a quick uh, view of the exchange. Um, I'd like to. Uh, you know, make it interactive, and if you guys have questions, we should, uh, you, know, you know, try to um, explore further. Any questions? Nobody? The question is, can you talk about the developments in Plasma? What more can we do to continue the protocol? Um, so Plasma, when the paper originally was written, it was a very high-level paper. It didn't have a lot of uh, details. But it was a key idea that was missing uh, was it was addressing something called the data availability problem. When, um, uh, you know, when you don't have information to validate the state of the chain, what do you do? And uh, the solution they came up was we simply uh, exit the you know exit the funds to the main chain uh, the issue with this was uh, w the way, way plasma was uh, originally proposed was there would be exit games and this was based on previous work um, to do with the uh, exit games and, and things such things uh, the, the only issue with that was you would have to wait one week to withdraw which was which is pretty much uh, you know, useless for a trader because you, if you want to do any arbitrage or anything else like that, you need to be able to withdraw uh, in an hour or so uh, to be practical. Anything even more than a day it was a problem. So, th so that was one. The other was in Plasma, you could only send a payment. That's it. Um, for a trading platform, you need to validate everything from the order to the fill. To the, uh, to, to the fact that the right amount of assets have changed, it has changed to the right uh, people, uh, all the assets add up after, you know, all of these need to be uh, cryptographically verified in every transaction. So in Glow and Plasma, you have eight entries for every, uh, every fill. And they have to do with uh, assets moving to each other, um, commissions being paid to the exchange, any affiliate fees and so on. Uh, so there, there's still a lot of work. It's still a research topic for um, you know others. Uh, what we are working on right now is to make it uh, upgradable in a decentralized way, so that um, the public can uh, veto any uh, you know if any if there's a bad upgrade before the upgrade goes into effect and so on. So we want to make it as decentralized as possible, without sacrificing uh, practically decentralized without sacrificing. Uh, performance. We, we know that if we add any latency or uh, any gas fee uh, or depend on the blockchain for, uh, you know, to, to publish every trade on the blockchain, it's just going to die. It's just not going to scale. Go ahead. The 
The question is, what are the challenges of introducing margin trading to Plasma? It's a very good question. Uh, we, uh, before uh, Leverage, we were operating a margin trading exchange called uh, CoinPit. And um, we, ha we have always been uh, trying to have it completely decentralized. So when we wanted to do leverage, we didn't want to create a spot exchange. We wanted to create a futures exchange, a derivatives exchange, where we can do all kinds of derivatives. Uh, and uh, the way that works is we have a margining system that is decentralized. And uh, we do that by having mandatory uh, stop orders. Uh, we have a paper that explains all the technical details, uh, but we designed it very specifically to um, offer derivative trading. Any other questions? The question is, how do you see ETH 2.0 moving this whole process forward? So ETH 2.0 is focused on sharding primarily, and beacon chains and all of that. Uh, I still think the way it looks is that it's still experimental, and it will run in testnet for a year or two. And um, honestly, uh, until it works, I, I don't know it works. Uh, I've seen a lot of things in the blockchain world that works well for uh, a few months, and then something happens, the whole thing collapses. So in a financial system, when you are using other people's money, you're putting other people's money at risk, uh, you, you need to be very, very conservative. Uh, actually, using Ethereum itself is highly aggressive. Uh, when I was on Wall Street, unless a technology has been in production for three years, they wouldn't touch it. Um, so that, uh, a couple of reasons. One is, you know, the, the, uh, if something happens, it's your head, you know, the person who made the decision. But more important, uh, it is uh, considered reckless to put other people's funds at risk. Two minutes, there's two minutes, so one more question. Anybody? All right, great, uh, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.